In 2016, the Washington State Treasurer's race went uncontested, but this election year, it's a two-candidate contest. With COVID-19 and other issues across the state, the Washington State Treasurer's Office will play a crucial role in shaping our state's economic recovery. Tonight, a debate on issues of key importance between first-term State Treasurer Dwayne Davidson and his challenger, Mike Pellicciotti. Presented by the League of Women Voters of Washington State, the League of Women Voters of Benton and Franklin Counties, TVW, and the Spokesman Review. Live from Pullman, Washington, on the campus of Washington State University, we present the NWPB Vote 2020 Washington State Treasurer's Debate. Welcome. The League of Women Voters of Washington Education Fund, along with our partners, including the Spokesman Review and local leagues, are pleased to present to you the candidates for our statewide offices. I am Lunell Hott, President of the League of Women Voters of Washington and the League's Education Fund. Ever since the founding of the League 100 years ago, a significant part of our mission has been to provide voter education. This program is an opportunity for the candidates to present their views and positions on the office they are running for so that you, the voter, can make the most informed decision when you mark your ballot. The League and the Spokesman Review are sponsoring debates and forums around the state. We have gathered questions from many locales with the help of our co-sponsors. You can find up-to-date information on our website, lwvwa.org. The League also sponsors an online voters pamphlet with candidate and issue information at vote411.org. We are working with TVW and our other media co-sponsors to extend the reach of these forums throughout the state. Additional viewing information is available at tvw.org. Most importantly, in order to vote, you must be registered to vote. You can do that online with the Secretary of State or at an elections office near you. Our vote411.org website has more information. And now, to get to the candidates, here is our moderator who will briefly explain the process. Well, thank you very much to the League of Women Voters of Washington State. I'm Matt Loveless, and this is Northwest Public Broadcasting's live debate in the race for state treasurer in Washington State between incumbent Dwayne Davidson and Mike Pellicciotti. Now, a quick explanation of the ground rules for tonight. We are conducting this debate virtually, but we are able to communicate live as such, the format tonight will follow most traditional debates. We have a number of questions, many provided by the League of Women Voters of Benton Franklin Counties, as well as the State League, which the candidates will be given the opportunity to answer. The order in which we begin is the order the candidates' names appear on the ballot. Now, the candidates will alternate opportunities to answer first. That candidate who speaks first will also be provided time for a short rebuttal. Each response is given a 90 second time limit, 30 seconds for the rebuttals, and all involved will be able to see a countdown clock. Now it's my job tonight to keep us on time, which means we ask of our candidates, please refrain from interruptions, attacks on your opponent, and please stay on topic. And since we are conducting this debate live, we do want to give our viewers and our followers a chance to participate in terms of picking topics that are important to you. Viewers, you have a couple ways to contribute. Go to NWPB's Vote 2020 page and select from the provided topics. You can also vote on Twitter. We'll combine those results and the top choice will be added to our list of questions. We'll do that twice. So for those of you following along, you can hop on and vote now. We'll ask the first question from there in a little less than 15 minutes. Well, now let's learn about our candidates, beginning with incumbent Dwayne Davidson. Mr. Davidson has been Washington State's treasurer since winning the seat in the 2016 election. Prior to that, Mr. Davidson was a four-term treasurer in Benton County. He has also served the state as an assistant state auditor. He holds a bachelor's of science in accounting from Central Washington University. And the challenger, Mike Pellicciotti. Mr. Pellicciotti is a current member of the Washington House of Representatives, representing District 30, covering the south side of King County and north side of Pierce County. During his time in the legislature, he served on the House Capital Budget Committee. His roles in Washington government also include roles as an assistant attorney general and the chair of the Washington Equal Justice Coalition. He earned a Juris Doctor degree from Gonzaga University Law School. 
Mr. Davidson, Mr. Pellicciotti, thank you for being here, even during this pandemic, allowing voters to get to learn a little bit more about you. We aren't going to ask you for traditional opening statements tonight, though we will begin a bit broad to allow you a chance to introduce yourselves. And for this first question, we'll start with Mr. Davidson. Why do you believe you're the best candidate for this position? Oh, well, thank you. And thank you for uh, uh, hosting this. This is uh, great for us to be able to uh, uh, to basically uh, give our strengths and, and also some of our accomplishments and for the voters to get us to know us better. Uh, I have uh, I have dedicated a good portion of my life to public manage, uh, public funds management. Uh, like I said in the introduction, I've uh, been a public uh, funds treasurer for a long time, and I have a passion for this. I don't want to do anything else. If elected to the second term, I'm going to make that my uh, completion of my uh, time in public office. Uh, two terms, I believe, is enough, and uh, I've got a few projects that I'd like to finish uh, that I've started uh, this uh, first term. Um, I started off as a CPA, had a background, a family that was involved in a private uh, business and farming, and I went on to uh, government accounting, really appreciated uh, uh, the work that was done at local governments, uh, went on to uh, serve in local government, and then since now coming to the state, I have a real passion and a real desire to make uh, life easier for those uh, uh, at the front lines, if you will, of delivering government services to the public. And that happens at our small local governments. That's why I'm really proud about the support that I've gotten from uh, county treasurers and other county uh, and local uh, government officials that have endorsed me on a bipartisan fashion for my campaign. I, um, I just love doing what I'm doing. I would like to do it for another term. Mr. Davidson, thank you very much. And the same question for Mr. Pellicciotti. Why do you believe you are the best candidate for this position? Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Matt, for moderating. I want to thank the League of Women Voters and thank you to Washington State University uh, for hosting this. Um, look, I, I think I have the broad legal uh, financial experience needed to address today's uh, challenging economic conditions. Uh, the, the situations we're dealing with today are not what we were dealing with just a few years ago. And one of the things I'm proud of is as a state elected official, I'm one of the, the only state elected officials to always say no to corporate campaign donations. And that's allowed for me to lead on issues to get dark money out of Washington state politics, to pass laws, to have political action committee transparency, to have to, my corporate crime act that increased penalties against corporations for the first time in nearly a century. And as treasurer, I'm gonna to continue to fight for much more transparency in government and will always fight for working families and retirees now more than ever. We need a treasurer who is standing up, showing up, and addressing the fundamental challenges in our economy uh, that we're seeing uh, facing uh, working families and retirees today. The state treasurer works in so many critical, important issues, protecting government pensions, making sure that uh, retirees um, have a retirement to come to, making sure that when people invest in their kids' education that those funds are protected. Um, affordable housing, so many of these issues are addressed by the treasurer through the treasurer's service on various boards and commissions. Um, the current treasurer is not showing up to uh, these boards and commissions. He's not attended, personally attended nearly half of these boards and commissions. Um, it's putting a strain on resources and I will not be an absentee treasurer. Mr. Pelciotti, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for those introductions, both of you. And now we begin our series of questions following our debate format tonight. As I mentioned, we have about 10 questions to get to time permitting. Mr. Davidson will answer first to the following question. Mr. Pellicciotti will be asked the same question. You each have 90 seconds to respond. Remember, no interruptions here tonight. Now, following Mr. Pellicciotti's remarks, Mr. Davidson, you are allowed 30 seconds for a rebuttal, if you so choose. Moving forward, we will alternate in terms of who goes first in that very same procedure. And without trying to speak for voters out there, it probably would be good to clear up what a treasurer does, but also what you think is important in a state treasurer. Mr. Davidson, in your opinion, what are the two most important duties of the state treasurer's office? Yes, certainly the most important thing about a treasurer is a, a, there's a different functions of government. And what the treasurer does is a safeguards funds, safeguards public funds, and, uh, and keeps them in investments that uh, uh, basically uh, return uh, an investment earnings to the taxpayer uh, while he is safeguarding, he or she is safeguarding those funds. That's the most important function. Uh, budgetary uh, issues are handled by uh, OFM. It's really important to make that distinction because the primary purpose of a treasurer is uh, to make sure 
that, uh, that the funds are well invested, they are safely invested, and, uh, and they're available to the local governments that he makes investments, he or she makes investments for uh, when they are needed. Uh, that's really important because the state treasurer uh, basically is a treasurer for the entire state. Numerous, we have the funds of uh, all the different taxing jurisdictions throughout the state. And uh, when they want, uh, when they need those funds, it's important for us to have those funds available to them and, uh, uh, and have them invested in things that are uh, not likely to be a loss and stolen. That's the most important thing. That's the difference between us and a budget office. And I believe that my office has conducted uh, their job in that uh, extremely well. Thank you very much, Mr. Davidson. And Mr. Pellicciotti, same question to you, uh, and I'll, I'll repose the question every time uh, just for clarity's sake. What do you think are the two most important duties of the state treasurer's office? Well, thank you for the question. I, I do agree that one of the two most important jobs of being treasurer is to protect the financial interests of the people of the state of Washington. And that, and that's, that has a real effect in people's lives. Again, like I was saying before, whether or not housing financing is is finance, you know, so that there's affordable housing, so that seniors have continuous care as they age. Um, that it's the job of the treasurer to show up to the meetings to protect those things. Um, the state investment board, which protects workers' pensions, so a hundred billion dollars is invested through the state investment board. The previous state treasurer chaired that board and hardly ever missed a meeting. The current state treasurer has missed, uh, has only attended three of the last 21 meetings, including a meeting just today that he did not attend. Um, the Housing Finance Commission that protects and provides affordable housing for seniors. He's only attended three of the last 30 of those meetings. These are the critical core functions of making sure that um, the interests of the people of the state of Washington are protected. Um, there is also uh, a very important role in promoting issues of transparency. And so when I'm state treasurer, I'm gonna be advancing a range of important transparency initiatives, including a transparency portal like they do in Pennsylvania, where it lets people know how their money is spent. I think I hear from constituents all the time that they don't know how their money is spent and if it's being spent wisely. People should have better access to that and they should know what's going on in their treasury. As treasurer, I'm gonna put forward that transparency portal and I'm gonna make sure there's more unclaimed property getting into the hands of the people of the state of Washington, which belongs to the people. Thank you, Mr. Pelciotti. Mr. Davidson, you have 30 seconds. You have a rebuttal to that. Yes, I, I thought we were going to be uh, free of uh, personal attacks of our opponents, but because he continues to do it, I'm going to defend myself on uh, the allegations he just made. Uh, I do show up at meetings is because of the fact that I have built a team of, of people that have delegated to serve for me on some of these committees that bring extreme talent uh, to uh, those positions. I don't have time to expand on uh, those individuals and what they bring and their qualifications, but it's, an, it's immense. It uh, has advanced a couple women to uh, leadership positions, and it's unfortunate that he keeps these attacks up. And, and I will remind uh, both of you that we, we are trying to limit the number of attacks on the opponent, of course, throughout the course of this debate. Um, but I appreciate the rebuttal there, and that will sort of be the format we'd use going forward. Now, I want to remind, before we move on, our viewers, you still have time to vote, of course, in the election, but also at nwpb.org's Vote 2020 page, and follow Northwest Public Broadcasting on Twitter. You have a chance to select a question for these candidates, or at least a topic for a question. The question we'll use in the next five minutes or so will be selected by you, so be sure to get your vote in now. We will put up a new poll after we ask your question, and we'll do this again later in the debate. Now, the League and our viewers, not the only ones choosing questions tonight. We have asked our candidates to provide a question they would like to ask of their opponents. Now, here's how this will work, gentlemen. I will read the question provided by your opponent, you will have 90 seconds for a response. We're going to give the candidate who asked the question 30 seconds following their opponent's response. Now, please, again, use that time staying on topic. No interruptions, please. We understand these questions by nature can draw some more heated debate. Now, there, these are meant to give viewers, though, a chance to hear their candidate address concerns brought up by their opponent. Now, I will preface this, gentlemen, with the fact that we've received your questions and we will ask them in a way that seeks the answer to them. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's not my role to include accusatory or inflammatory languages in the questions that I ask, so I have chosen to adjust the wording in both of your questions. So with that, our first candidate question comes from Mr. Davidson for Mr. Pellicciotti. 
Mr. Pellicciotti, as a legislator, you have supported billions of dollars worth of increases in taxes and fees, even during a surplus. Has there been a tax increase you have not supported? And why or why not? Oh, uh, absolutely. My focus has always been on doing three things as a legislature. legislator. Uh, getting rid of corporate tax breaks. Number two, making sure that the taxes on working families and retirees are always minimized and making sure that uh, we reduce uh, burdens, especially on seniors. So I've done that. Um, one, through my effort in reducing car tab uh, taxes in our state, I've led uh, an effort to reduce car tabs uh, in our state on working families and retired individuals. I have also uh, co-sponsored legislation to reduce and provide uh, exemptions for seniors and veterans on their property taxes so we can reduce the effect on property taxes. And we've done that. We've done that by decreasing the cost or by uh, removing unnecessary corporate tax breaks. And I think that's been a critical difference uh, between my opponent and me. Um, you know, he's funded by various corporations. I am not. I have always focused on making sure that we're fighting for working families and retirees at all times. And when we do that right, um, then we'll make sure that we can balance uh, our taxes so it's more fair on working families and retired folks. Now, the position of state treasurer doesn't deal a whole lot with determining those taxes. That is the job of the legislature. Um, but I think it is really worth noting uh, that there were opportunities that he had uh, to take certain positions related to the reduction of property taxes. He's declined to do that. However, when it's come to protecting various corporate tax uh, exemptions, he's spoken out in favor of them. That's not right. I'm always going to fight for working families and retirees at all times. Mr. Davidson, you, you posed that question initially. We'll give you 30 seconds to respond. I'm going to have to actually ask for forgiveness. We just lost connection, and we were just able to get connected uh, again. So uh, I sincerely apologize about this. I it came back online at the very last of that response. So, so sorry. Uh, well, I, I guess I, I suppose I would ask you, maybe use your 30 seconds. You sent us the candidate question. Maybe uh, I can give you the opportunity to add a little context to that. Well, the, the reason why I ask that is because uh, as we emerge from this COVID uh, situation, uh, it's going to be imperative that we keep uh, taxes uh, low because there has been enough businesses already crippled through this. Uh, uh, businesses have closed throughout the state. And if we hit them with additional taxes at this time, it's going to close a good many other. And so that's the reason why I pose that question. Uh, my candidate has uh, voted for practically every tax that we can research, uh, uh, every tax that uh, came before him. And I think that's important for the taxpayers to know. All right, now we're moving on to uh, those of you who participated in our poll. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we're addressing the first topic selected by our viewers out there. And our next question for Mr. Davidson to start off, what impact, if any, does the state treasurer have on the budgeting process? And how would you go about managing state monies in uncertain financial times? Uh, those are very two important questions. Uh, some of the involvement we have in uh, budgeting uh, during uh, state times, like I said, we're not the budget office, but uh, we realize the difficulty that local governments and uh, state agencies are having with their budget. And uh, the treasurer's office is funded through a revolving fund that we uh, charge a fee to everybody that use treasury services. Uh, I have cut that fee to the lowest level that has been in state history, uh, 20 basis points. And that is to uh, allow uh, state agencies and local governments uh, more of their available funds to deal with this uh, crisis situation. And of course, uh, during this time, we also got legislation uh, that allows us to invest uh, funds for those uh, public entities at a longer term and duration than um, than previously allowed. And that allows us for to increase yield and increase investment revenue for uh, some local governments. We are trying everything we can in developing new uh, 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 products and procedures for uh, local governments to use to help them with their budget situation. Uh, lastly, I would just like to talk about that we also, on the expenditure side, I talked about on the revenue side, on the expenditure side, we also develop a program that bundles uh, debt issuances for local entities that wouldn't be able to get the interest rate that we can for them at the state. And, uh, uh, and we uh, go out to the public market and get a rate that's comparable to what the state could good get and uh, offer those savings to local governments. So those are some of the services we do. And Mr. Pellicciotti, I'll just repeat the question for you, this one from our audience out there. What impact, if any, does the state treasurer have on the budgeting process? 
And how would you go about managing state monies in these uncertain financial times? Sure. Uh, well, thank you for the question. Uh, the treasurer's office should have a bigger impact, and the treasurer specifically should have a bigger impact related to the uh, efficient managing of, of the budgets and the state resources. Um, you know, right now the, the treasurer has hired a corporate uh, paid lobbyist to uh, work with the legislature. Um, one of the first things I'm going to do is, as treasurer is I'm going to get rid of uh, the contract lobbyist that's worked with the legislature, and I'm going to do the job myself. I'm going to work with the legislature and work with the legislature before they pass budgets to make sure they're being responsible pursuant to what we need to be doing to make sure that uh, we're doing what's right by our bond rating agencies, making sure we're setting certain parameters to make sure that um, working families and retirees are being protected. I mean, ultimately, these are decisions made by the legislature, but it's important that we have a treasurer that steps forward during the budget process to be able to communicate and connect with the legislature in dealing with this. I I'm the only one with the experience uh, in, in working with any type of uh, budget through the legislative process as, as an actual legislator. And I think that's important because it also gives me credibility uh, when I work and connect with various members of the legislature to address that. Um, related to the second part of your question, it is very important that we're doing everything we can to make sure we have responsible budgeting that's taking place. And that means making sure that everything that's ultimately done is in the best interest of working families and retirees at all times. And I think the treasurer can be taking a much more significant role in doing that. And I look forward to doing that as the next state treasurer. And Mr. Davidson, do you have a rebuttal? Uh, the use of the contract uh, lobbyist is a, a very justifiable, uh, the service they provide, they don't, they're not in lieu of the private meetings that happen with private members, of course not. They're usually there to help me organize those meetings so that I can go over and talk to members. And so uh, I, I'm, the, that's a cost that's totally justify, uh, justifiable. Uh, also, I, uh, while not serving as an actual legislator, I have worked with the legislators for, legislature for years as a president of the Treasurer's Association on getting a legislation that benefited uh, counties and local governments. So I have the experience there too. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Davidson. I think you both can see that time for the rebuttal, that 30 seconds is not very long. So a uh, chance to be more succinct at the end there is certainly what we're looking for. Well, this isn't the only opportunity for you, the viewer, to get involved. We will put up a new poll now. Go back on to nwpb.org and follow us on Twitter. Your voice matters, folks, so we want to make sure to address topics that matter most to you. So be sure to get back on there and vote. We will ask the next audience question here in about 10 minutes. Now, this next question comes again from the Benton, Franklin, and Washington State League of Women Voters. One of the many issues we're looking at tonight through the lens of COVID-19, considering the impact of the virus, what do you think needs to happen to the state's rainy day fund? And going forward, how do you balance using the rainy day fund when the needs are great, but the income is reduced? Mr. Pellicciotti, it's your turn to go first. Well, thank, thank you for that question. Um, one of the most important jobs of the treasurer is making sure we're promoting uh, a sufficient rainy day fund. Um, you know, we, we've had it built up over the last uh, several years uh, by the legislature, um, and most of that is done uh, through constitutional requirements. And those are protections that have been put in place by the people of the state of Washington. And thank goodness. I think that's one of the things that's very important to making sure that everything is done to uh, make sure we have the protections so that in moments like this, um, we can rely on that rainy day fund. It's raining not just for state government, it's raining for people all over the state. And you know, with the scaled down use of the rainy day fund at this time, um, it, in a measured way, it will allow for uh, there not to be an austerity budget uh, that, that has been promoted by, uh, by my opponent. I think it's one of these situations where people are hurting right now. We need to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to protect uh, the working families and retirees of the people of the state of Washington. Um, I'm always going to promote um, the importance of rainy day fund um, after it's scaled down and addresses some of the budget challenges that are taking place right now. Uh, it's one of the first things I'm going to be doing is making sure we're building it back up um, because we have to get through this challenging time. And then we have to make sure that as we go forward, we're dealing with the economic recovery that, that needs to take place. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pellicciotti. And Mr. Davidson, I will pose the question in full again, since it is a longer two part question, considering the impact of the virus. What do you think needs to happen to the state's rainy day fund? And going forward, how do you balance using that rainy day fund when the need is great, but state income is reduced? Yes, this is exactly the situation that the rainy day fund has been set up for. It's too bad that the legislature didn't come back in a session so that we could use it. 
because it takes the legislature to be in session to make an appropriation out of that. However, nobody's been a stronger advocate for a rainy day fund uh, balance and rainy day fund management than I have. I've been very, very vocal about it. Just recently, I have got a pass through the Economic Forecast Council uh, inclusion of what that rainy day fund balance is on our general reports that that committee uh, sees. I think it's important because we need to send a benchmark. We need to do so much more about the rainy day fund. We need to set a benchmark of how much money we need in there and, and, and try to keep it at that. Right now, we have parameters of how much money is put in there, but it's not enough. You compare it to other states that basically have provisions that say that if you take money out, you've got so many months to put it back in. We need more structure to it. And that's what I will continue to advocate. That's what I have successfully been advocating for as part of the uh, Economic Forecast Council. And uh, that is the type of uh, uh, a direction I would like to see uh, the rainy day fund go into because rainy day funds are imperative for good financial management. And in addition, right now we only have a rainy day fund for the general fund. I believe the rainy day fund concept is something that should be included for other funds as well. Because it's uh, when you have revenue cycles that fluctuate, you need that rainy day fund balance to get you through. And Mr. Pellicciotti, do you have a response to that? Well, this is something where I think we're in, a, we're in general agreement. I, I, I think when we're talking about the rainy day fund, it is a, the job of the treasurer to make sure um, the treasurer is promoting at all times the importance of the rainy day fund. That said, it is raining for people right now. This is one of these times when it's an appropriate time to tap into what's called the budget stabilization account, this rainy day fund, to make sure that um, we can get through this, the challenging budget cycle that's that's ahead of us. And I think that I'll be able to communicate that well uh, to the legislature, and I think I'll be a respected voice in that process. All right, thank you, gentlemen. And our next question is another one from candidate to candidate. This time, this question Mr. Pellicciotti has submitted to ask Mr. Davidson. A reminder, Mr. Davidson, We'll have 90 seconds to answer the following question. Mr. Pellicciotti will be allowed a 30 second response here. And we've already sort of addressed this topic. Mr. Davidson, you'll get a little more time to answer to it. In June, you chose to hold a political fundraiser with bank lobbyists, while at the same time, the state investment board was meeting to address the recession's impact to the retirement pensions of Washington's government workers. What was the thought process behind that? Well, first of all, it's not true. They, it's just blatantly not true. What we did that day is we did, uh, while there was a request for campaign contributions uh, at the end of the event, the primary purpose of that was to, uh, is to have a public forum on the concept of a state bank. There are uh, members of the legislature that have advocated for a state bank. And uh, I think that that would be a disastrous thing for to happen in the state. It would pose great risk to the taxpayers if we were to go there. And we needed to have a forum, which a forum, by the way, which was even attended online by a legislator that said it was the best forum they ever heard on a state bank. And that's what we uh, did that particular day. I routinely have things go on during the uh, uh events of the State Investment Board, because I have a person assigned to that that has stellar qualifications to serve in that role. She is a, an investment expert. She helped build an investment pool at Benton County from the ground up. And now she is serving in my capacity there. I haven't delegated any of my authority away. I haven't delegated decision-making or policy uh, setting away. What I've done is I helped build a team of qualified individuals that have come to help increase the uh, uh, the resources available to the state by including people of extreme talent on uh, these various committees. It's called teamwork. And Mr. Pellicciotti, uh, Mr. Davidson there, uh, outright saying that the premise of your question is not true. Do you care to respond? <laughs> well, it is true. And I, I, I'll have to unpack a lot of things there. One, the State Investment Board is a critical board that's investing over $100 billion the previous state treasurer never missed a meeting, uh, hardly ever missed a meeting, and chaired the board. The current treasurer has only time through the last 20 meetings, including that, uh, including that meeting he missed. At the fundraiser, um, he, uh, a couple things. One, there was an ask for money from bank lobbyists who were attending. A week later, the Bank Lobbyist Association gave him a maximum check. It's in the Public Disclosure Commission. You can look it up. All right, thank you, Mr. Pellicciotti. Well, we're moving on now. Time for another uh, question from our audience tonight, selected among a number of options on our website and social media pages. That question, Mr. Pellicciotti first. 
Uh, do you foresee default or other problems impacting the collection of property taxes here in this current time of financial uncertainty? Well, it's, it's, thank you for that question. It's one of the reasons I've really tried to lead on reducing property tax burdens uh, that are on uh, working families, retirees, and especially seniors uh, in our state. Um, you know, I guess what I will say is this, is we need to be making sure uh, that as a, the legislature should be making sure uh, that reducing the, the burden on property taxes uh, is going to be one of the most important things that's done as we go forward. Um, to the extent there are um, folks who are affected, I would hope that in the various counties that a lot of the protections that might also be put in place are, are, are utilized to provide the, those type of protections that, that, that need to occur. I, I, I am very concerned, as I was pointing out earlier, this is a rainy day for a lot of folks, for working families and retirees across the state. This is an incredibly difficult time. I mean, we, we have unemployment rates over 10%. I mean, th this is an economic crisis that requires all hands on deck. And, it, and it's particularly important when we deal with issues of affordable housing, that the housing finance, uh, that the treasurer's role in the housing finance committee is that much more important. That's why I'm gonna make sure I'm always attending the Housing Finance Committee meetings so that we can be protecting issues of affordable housing, that we're doing uh, protections and advocating to the legislature to put protections in place for those who currently have housing and are paying property taxes and doing everything we need to do to protect uh, people's housing in our state. Thank you, Mr. Pellicciotti. And Mr. Davidson, I'll repeat the question. Do you foresee any default or other problems impacting the collection of property taxes in this current time of financial uncertainty? Uh, yes, I do. I, I actually I had a meeting today about that very uh, very subject. Uh, one of the meetings I had while the state investment board was uh, was uh, going on, and that has to do with the school bond guarantee program. The school bond guarantee program is a wonderful program that has afforded extremely uh, uh, reasonable financing to our school districts all throughout the state. As counties have extended due dates for property taxes, I have keen awareness of that. Being a former county treasurer. I am writing to the various county treasurers that extend those property taxes to make sure that we have done the cash flow analysis to make sure we have those bond payments due. Uh, we have enough on hand to make those bond payments due when they come due. Uh, that's the important type of stuff that a treasurer, a trained treasurer that's had much experience like I have in this very nature of collecting property taxes. I am concerned about it. It's exact direct uh, uh, question add on to a concern that I have. And uh, we are reaching out to the county treasurers to work with them to determine how far property taxes can be extended uh, with, before we run into problems with uh, uh, bond repayment. And so, and then I'd like to use the balance of my time to address the concern he that what he said about the former treasurer. The former treasurer, who is a was a good treasurer, he did serve on the state investment board and he did have a good attendance. That same gentleman also had an appointed person on housing finance that almost attended all of the meetings on his behalf on that committee. For some reason, we leave that fact out. And Mr. Pellicciotti, 30 seconds to respond to that. Sure. Um, the, the treasurer just a month ago, the incumbent just a month ago, said to a Republican group that the reason he stopped attending the state investment board meetings was because he was getting more involved with the Housing Finance Commission. The problem was, is he's only attended three of the last 30 Housing Finance Commission meetings. And instead of attending those Housing Finance Commission meetings, it's not like he was doing something more important. He was getting a haircut. He was attending at the state fair. He was attending Republican fundraisers and speeches. There are more important priorities he has right now uh, than dealing with these issues. Well, the next question comes from the League of Women Voters, sort of a broad look at the position and the effects COVID-19 has had on it. Starting with Mr. Davidson, what do you believe the impact has been on the functions of the treasurer's office? Related to COVID? I'll take that as a yes, related to COVID. Yes, uh, it yes, it's, uh, it's been devastating uh, as businesses close, uh, retail uh, sales tax revenue continues to decrease. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a, a great concern to us in the treasurer's office that we get people back to work because what we've been able to see is, is when we have lifted restrictions throughout the state, when we have lifted restrictions and got people back to work, we have started seeing a recovery in the economy. I mean, immediately our tax collections go up. So I think it's imperative that we do what we need to do to stay safe, but at the same time, we need to get people back into work. We need to get the economy uh, rolling again uh, before we uh, uh, deepen this recession. Uh, I think the recovery 
could be right around the corner, but we need to be diligent about getting uh, uh, people back to work. Uh, and the treasurer's office is going to do everything they can to uh, try to uh, reduce costs to local governments uh, so that they do not have more of a financial burden uh, through this time. And we can um, uh, provide them good investment services and be able to find extremely reasonable uh, uh, interest rates on their uh, capital needs. But I think the one thing we really need to avoid is borrowing for cash flow. We don't need to be getting in a situation where we're trying, where we're borrowing cash flow because that's basically a payday loan for governments. And I think that that should be avoided at all costs uh, because then you just have that money to pay back at a later time and uh, increased taxes are gonna be the result. Uh, I'm also concerned about the unemployment fund and I don't have enough time to respond about that, but the unemployment fund and the fraud is a, is a great concern. Well, Mr. Pelosciotti, uh, we'll get the question to you as well. The impact, what do you think the impact has been on the functions of the treasurer's office? Well, I, I, think, it's, I think it's been significant. I mean, COVID has affected us in so many different ways. Um, you, you know, what I will say is this, the State Investment Board, when it met earlier this year, addressed the economic concerns related to COVID and how it could impact the state of Washington and its investments. That was like in, at the at early meeting early this year before it was even widely distributed because of what was happening in China. Uh, the State Investment Board is one of the most critical meetings in order to be able to address issues like this and how it can affect the Treasury, uh, the Treasurer specifically. Um, that's why it's so critical that the Treasurer attend all meetings of the State Investment Board in the same way the previous State Treasurer attended all meetings of the State Investment Board. So that part of that information is being able to advise the legislature on things that might be taking place um, and be able to be informed related to these issues. Uh, one of the other important things in terms of the impact COVID has had is the impact it's had on small businesses. With the Econ Economic Development Finance Authority that the state treasurer should be sitting on uh, addresses small business grants and needs to make sure that uh, local businesses get the small business grants that they need right now in this critical time. Um, again, you know, the, the incumbent is only has not attended a single, uh, personally attended a single meeting of the Economic Development Finance Authority since the end of uh, 2018. Uh, we're in an economic crisis. We need all hands on deck right now. Uh, and as state treasurer, it's one of the things I'm gonna do is make sure uh, that, that I'm attending all of these meetings to make sure we're addressing all of the COVID related crises that we're seeing uh, in our economy right now. And Mr. Davidson, a response. I have all hands on deck. I have my hands on deck and the people that I've appointed in these positions, extremely talented people that have the resource that bring resources that are recognized at the state and national level that doesn't compromise the services being provided by the treasurer's office at all. He keeps talking about my lack of attendance at these meetings. There's not, a, there is a treasurer delegate there providing good services supervised by me. It's a win-win for the state, and it's too bad that he doesn't see that. It's called building a team and giving them power to do their job. All right, gentlemen, time to move on. And a reminder with our questions, please stay on topic here. Now, this question also from the League of Women Voters. Mr. Pellicciotti will get first opportunity here. What is needed to ensure the security and safety of records for this office, while at the same time providing transparency? Well, thank you for that question. One of the things I did in the legislature is I was the first legislator to voluntarily provide my public records, uh, including my uh, full uh, official calendar. Um, and I led the effort, including a call on the governor to veto the legislature's attempt to hide its public records. The issue of transparency in government is so critical, and it's that much more impart important for the position of state treasurer. Um, you know, one of the things that's important is to know uh, what's going on in the treasurer's office. One of the things I will commit to do is as a treasurer, I will always provide my official calendar um, uh, upon request pursuant to the Public Records Act. It's actually a legal requirement right now. Uh, current treasurer received a request from uh, the uh, public records request for his calendar, and it's been uh, three months since he's provided uh, the full details related to all but a few months of his calendar. Uh, he, his office has indicated that his full official calendar won't be available for another two years. Um, that's not right. That just that is not that's how the Public Records Act is supposed to work. When I come in as state treasurer, we're going to make sure we invest the resources necessary to have a transparent office that is always providing full transparency related to all aspects of the office. And my transparency portal that I'll create will provide that much more information to people in the state of Washington so they know what's going on with their finances as well as the activities 
of their state treasurer. It's one of the most important core functions of the state treasurer is making sure there's transparency in finances. It's what I've done throughout my, my public service career, and I will definitely do a state treasurer. And Mr. Davidson, uh, same question. What is needed to ensure the security and safety of the records for the office while at the same time providing some transparency? Yes, yeah, so, uh, transparency is one of the goals I have for the office. I'm very, very uh, adamant that uh, that people understand uh, the state uh, finances more. I'm going to talk to uh, you just a, a little bit about a couple of things I did. I uh, have put out a debt affordability study out on the website that gives great detail about the debt. There is a debt digest, which is a one page uh, document that people can get uh, full details about uh, in uh, in a time of drinking a cup of coffee on that issue. I put out the citizen century report where we uh, offer our goals and accomplishments. These are the type of things over and over and over again. I, I developed an entirely new website and published that and increased the amount of disclosure on that. I have uh, really advanced the office in the way of, of, uh, of disclosure. Uh, he keeps bringing up this public records request on my calendar. And that's really unfortunate because I hate how much of this debate time uh, and these last editorial boards have been de dedicated to things that are just blatantly untrue. Uh, he has asked for my full calendar, has been provided to them, and just so people can find it, it's now on my website. So if you want to, go to davidsonforwa.com and just go out there and look at the treasurer's schedule for the last four years. That's what we provided to him. The staff is, there's other attachments that we put to the uh, calendar because of the way that I uh, work and uh, 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 and have so many documents on that, that disclosure is being handled by a representative from the attorney general's office and my internal uh, counsel. So I don't know what more I can say. Um, Mr. Pellicciotti, Mr. Davidson, again, denying uh, the premise uh, of what you had said in your response. Do you have a rebuttal there? I, I, I do, because one of the things that became very apparent very quickly is uh, his office made it clear that the full calendar would not be available until the year 2022. And when just the month of June of 2020 was provided, it, it showed things that were not on this earlier Excel document that he provided, including seven, eight different campaign events that were on his official calendar, at least one of which was on his, at the same time he was supposed to be at another meeting that was not originally provided. I, I'm more than happy to make that available on my website so people can see what he was actually doing at the, same, at the time he was supposed to be at these meetings. All right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. So far, we've addressed a number of topics in this debate. Looks like we might have time for a couple more questions from the League of Women Voters and Washington State and Benton and Franklin County. Our next question is directed first toward Mr. Davidson. In your view, should tax breaks be given to businesses be reviewed and reconsidered on a regular schedule in order to ensure that current contributions to the state economy are still relevant and reasonable? And how does COVID-19 impact this? Well, uh, COVID-19 has impacted all business, uh, and uh, there's no denying that. And uh, businesses are looking for what relief uh, they can. As far as uh, 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 tax breaks to uh, 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 industries, of course, that's a legislative function that's mostly up to the legislature to do. Uh, I can just tell you that from a uh, local standpoint, whenever we uh, 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 tried to make it accommodations uh, to uh, some uh, uh, some industries, sometimes they moved anyway. And so I think that sometimes we do have to do a diligent review uh, of those uh, breaks to make sure that they're still relevant and that the state is still getting a benefit of uh, those type of tax breaks. That's more, uh, that's not a, a, a function of the treasurer's office. I'm saying that basically uh, more as a, uh, uh, as, as just a individual than as a, a treasurer. And Mr. Pelicciotti, in your opinion, I guess following up there, should, should tax breaks be given to businesses? Should they be reviewed and reconsidered on a regular schedule to ensure that current contributions to the state economy are still relevant and reasonable? And how does COVID-19 impact this situation? Well, COVID, thank COVID addresses, affects the situation because we're in a, we're in a budget uh, challenge right now. And one of the various aspects of that is how do you get out of that budget crisis? And um, one of the things I've always done as a legislator is saying, is said, we need to focus on corporate tax breaks first, because if you address and reduce what is dozens and dozens and dozens of corporate tax breaks, um, then you can reduce what is otherwise an unfair uh, tax burden on working families and retired people. 
it's it's the benefit of me never having accepted corporate donations. I don't have those corporate campaign donation entanglements. And, and as a legislator, I've been able to really fight for a lot of those things. And that's the only way you can do that. Because what happens is I've seen what happens in the legislature. It's the lobbyists are always coming forward and saying, well, don't touch this corporate tax break. Another lobby says, don't touch this corporate tax break. And then people say, well, what about property tax? Oh, what about car tabs? Well, there are any lobbyists showing up. Well, it's because it affects the people of the state of Washington. They're the ones who are always getting hit over the head on the issues like this. It is so critical that we fight for working families and retirees again. It's, it's small businesses. I mean, that is the way, best way we're going to be able to get out of this COVID crisis. It's something I have always done as a legislator. And I think it is that much more important as state treasurer to be able to understand that dynamic and how it affects working families. And I will always be thinking about that uh, as state treasurer. And on the topic of tax breaks for businesses, Mr. Davidson, do you have a rebuttal? Well, I think we need to be careful here because basically, you know, the 58% uh, uh, of all the taxes are paid by business. And if you take a look at the state budget that's increased from $30 billion for the biennium to over 50 in just a few short years, I don't think what we have here is a revenue problem, as my opponent has just been uh, saying. What we have here is an expenditure problem. And we need to make sure that, uh, that uh, governments are as efficient as possible before they go asking for additional taxes. That's what's needed. And due to time constraints for this round, our last question, we'll have one minute to respond for our candidates. So just one minute here. We will still have the 30-second rebuttal period. But Mr. Pellicciotti, going first here, what does the State Investment Board do? You've spoken about it a lot today. And how would you contribute as a member? Well, I'll show up. I will actually go to the meetings. The State Investment Board is one of the most critical roles the state treasurer has. The State Investment Board invests over $100 billion of your money. It makes sure that when you retire, you have a pension waiting for you. It protects educational investments in your kids' college education. So when folks want to go to Washington State University, their, their investments are protected. And when there was a $6 billion loss in the first quarter earlier this year, the incumbent was instead holding a political fundraiser. I will attend these meetings in the same way the previous state treasurer attended these meetings. He chaired the board. It was that important. I'm going to be doing everything I can as a member of the state investment board to protect working families' investments. It is the most critical role the state treasurer has on any board, and I will show up every day and fight, fight for the, the protections of working families and retirees. And Mr. Davidson, in your words, what does the board do and how do you contribute? Well, basically, the board basically protects the uh, pensions. Washington State has one of the best pension systems uh, in the nation. We are, uh, you know, about $130 billion invested in the 17 pension funds. We have 90% funded status. We do a good job with the pensions. What's really important here is that we keep the team that I have built in place because I have put real talent there. And when he says, well, I'll show up, that's unfortunate because he doesn't have the talent of the person that I've appointed to that board uh, to serve in that role. It's important for an elected treasurer to know their role and to provide oversight and uh, uh, oversight and uh, management from a uh, uh, from you know a higher level. Uh, the people that I've appointed to this board are extremely well respected uh, uh, in their field, but as being a CPA, decades treasurer, I can provide that oversight. The day-to-day -day activities and, and uh, involvement on these boards are best served by the people that I put on there and contribute far better than he could. And Mr. Pellicciotti, a response? Sure. Well, I guess what I would say is I don't know what higher level he's at. He has only attended three of the last 30 state investment board meetings. He has missed the When he missed the July meeting, he had nothing else on his calendar at all. It's one of the few calendars that he's provided. There was nothing else at all on his calendar. He's attending fundraisers instead of this. This idea that he's at this higher level doesn't make sense. It's the role of the state treasurer to represent the people of the state of Washington. The, that person is the elected official. I'm going to serve in the role that the people put that treasurer on, and that's to serve on the state investment board and bring the staff with me so that they can be there as well. Well, gentlemen, we only have time now for closing statements. You'll be allowed a minute 30 for your closing statement. I know this is kind of an enlightening round, but Mr. Davidson, let's first hear yours. Well, basically, I've been a, a, a treasurer uh, and I've done uh, what I consider a stellar, stellar job uh, from uh, all of my audits. And uh, you can look at the, uh, the accomplishments of the office. They're very, very numerous. I've 
developed very many programs that are uh, beneficial to the taxpayers. We uh, started the financial literacy program, which advocates for uh, 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 financial education in the schools. Um, we have, um, uh, I have fought against the concept about a state bank, which would basically put uh, public dollars uh, at risk. Uh, the comp uh, build a fund directory that basically is a, a clearinghouse for local governments to go to to find uh, grants and uh, loans available to them uh, to uh, help them with a project, something that never did exist before. These are type of things that my treasury management gives me the insight to be able to do. I'm very proud of the extreme talented staff uh, that I've brought uh, to the treasurer's office and together we're getting the job done. I really be believe that the job of a treasurer is to, uh, is to uh, uh, find talented people, give them a job, give them the resources, and then leave them alone and let them with proper oversight do the job. What is being not said about my tense at the meeting is that there's relationships built with these appointed people and their various boards. And if I jump on and jump off the board all the time, it demeans them. It basically keeps them from being effective because as soon as I show up in the room, I have to take the seat at that commission. So I'm best served being at the office supervising uh, their, their job. And Mr. Pellicciotti, please, your closing statement, sir. Well, again, thank you, Matt, for moderating this debate. Thank you to League of Women Voters. Thank you to Washington State for hosting. Uh, I guess I'll just speak to the people of the state of Washington. Um, we are in an economic crisis. You are dealing with all types of issues related to our economy. It is an incredibly challenging time. The least that you should expect is that your state treasurer is showing up every day to protect your investments, your retirement, making sure that the treasurer is attending meetings to deal with economic development, affordable housing, making sure that senior continuous care is being provided. And you know, again, the, the incumbent treasurer has only attended three of the last 21 now, he missed today, 21 state investment board meetings. He was talking about a clean audit. Of the three meetings he's attended since the end of 2017, uh, two of those meetings were the only two meetings uh, held at resorts. And the third was actually a meeting he showed up for where he brought forward a motion to, um, to amend an external audit that found that he had violated conflict of interest rules for the state investment board. He showed up for that meeting, brought forward a motion to amend an external audit that said that he was in violation uh, of conflict of interest rules. That, that is not a clean audit. You need a state treasurer who's gonna show up, will not be an absentee treasurer, and will do everything every day to fight for working families and retirees. Now more than ever, this is not a time for someone to, to simply serve as treasurer. You need somebody who's going to actually uh, do the work. And I look forward to doing that as your next state treasurer. Well, Mr. Davidson, Mr. Pellicciotti, really thank you so much for taking out the time for this debate tonight. Um, I also wanna thank the League of Women Voters of Benton and Franklin counties, along with the League of Women Voters of Washington State for doing so much work in organizing this. And before we go, one more message from the State League. Thank you for informing yourself about the candidates. The League is proud to be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing candidates or political parties at any level of government, always working on vital issues of concern to members and the public. Our main goal is to make democracy work. The State League sponsors the statewide candidate forums and debates, and our 20 local leagues, made up of 2,400 members, produce local election forums. This is the centennial year for both the League and the 19th Amendment, which recognized women's right to vote. It took more years for all women and men to actually secure the vote. Although our name contains the word women, the League is open to all men and women, 16 and older, and our purpose is to make sure voters understand issues and candidates. The League has two organizations, the education arm that presents candidate forums and debates across the state, it is our impartiality and our history as a trusted organization that gives us this privilege. The education arm, through the League's Vote 411 website, provides candidate information. It is different from the guide you receive from the Secretary of State's office because it is the only resource that covers every race in Washington. The League doesn't tell you how to vote, but it ensures you have enough information to be confident about your vote. The other, is the advocacy arm that promotes public policy in Olympia through about a dozen volunteer lobbyists. We are grateful to our partner, the Spokesman Review, 
and our local co-sponsors who have joined us in soliciting questions from voters for these programs. You can get a copy of your vote at lwv.org. It has detailed information about elections, descriptions of elected official offices, what to listen for in a debate or forum, and elections that have been won or lost over a single vote. You can also access Vote 411 on lwv.org. And don't forget, Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. There is still time to register. The state suggests mail-in voters should vote or should register, excuse me, up to eight days before Election Day. That would be by October 26th. Ballots must be postmarked on Election Day, though the USPS is recommending you submit your ballot a week before to ensure faster results. You can find information about ballot drop box locations at the Secretary of State's office website. And just a reminder, this is the first of many debates this election season on NWPB. For a complete list of debates, please check our website, nwpb.org slash vote 2020. Our next live debate, the Whitman County Commissioner's race incumbent Dean Kinzer and his challenger Tom Handy will join us next Thursday at 7 p.m. on KWSU-TV. We hope you can join us then. And for those listening on our NPR radio service of Northwest Public Broadcasting, 1A is coming up next. For those watching on our PBS stations, primetime PBS programming is just around the corner. Thank you again to Dwayne Davidson and Mike Pellicciotti for joining us for the Washington State Treasurer's Debate tonight. For all of us at NWPB, thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Good night.